time again for the Feed My Sheep Ministries Men of War Basic Training Broadcast. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Glad that you took the time out to join me this evening. I want to say uh, once again, good evening. Glad to be back hanging out with y'all again on this evening. Uh, God has been good. He has kept us. Uh, He has brought us through. He has... uh, opened up the doors for us, and he's gone before us and made the crooked path straight. Amen. So, uh, I have a lot, uh, as usual, that God gives me to say. So, gentlemen, I want to go ahead and jump right in with prayer so that we can go ahead and get started on this evening. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you. We thank you for another opportunity. Uh, to come together and expound on your word, Father, for another opportunity to come together and sit and go through your word and hear what you would have us to hear according to your word, your will, and your way, Father. We thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for each and every one that is gathered on this broadcast. We thank you for technology, Father, in the name of Jesus. Even though it comes with challenges sometimes, it is because of you, Father, that you make all things possible, Father. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you for meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to uh, give honor and respect to my pastor, uh, the pastor Mary Washington of Feed My Sheep Ministries, uh, located here in the heart of Irving, Texas. So, Pastor Washington, we love you. We thank you. Uh, We thank you for this opportunity. Uh, We thank you for a platform that uh, we, us men, uh, the basic men of war, basic training can come together and uh, dive into God's word. So those of you who are joining us for the first time, basic stands for becoming a soldier in Christ. That's what we are doing here uh, at Feed My Sheep Ministries. Amen. So first of all, I would like to share a testimony uh, on behalf of my wife, something that uh, God has blessed both of us with. Um, My wife had been on a previous uh, employment with the company uh, a few months ago, and um, she ended up leaving uh, to pursue another avenue. And... uh, that avenue, uh, not by her choice or of, you know, anything that uh, she became a part of, it did not work out. Um, trying to make a long story short, um, God always goes before you and makes the crooked path straight, gentlemen. God always works things out. But my wife had been praying. Close the doors that you want closed and open the doors that you want open. Uh, And us just having faith and believing in what he will do, not that of our own nature. And uh, man, I'll talk about a couple of those things tonight that God gave me. But again, trying to make a long story short, uh, my wife had received an email and a phone call from the not the employer that didn't work out, but where she had previously been. And in a nutshell, they want her to come back. I heard part of a a message that said, we can't think of anything or anyone better than what 
you know, we would want you to, 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 to come back. We can't think of anybody else that we would want to replace you basically is what they were saying. And, um, some things were worked out and have been worked out and will be worked out that, uh, going back to this previously, previous employer, um, will be an even greater, uh, avenue financially, uh, so to speak, uh, than what it was before a greater opportunity, uh, for my wife, uh, than what was before. And just want to give God all the glory and the praise Gentlemen, we to let you know that we have to trust in the Lord, because if it was a situation where we would have looked at with our natural eye, which I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight, we are still on this, uh, what we had been going over a few weeks ago in discipleship class here at Feed My Sheep Ministries, uh, giving God the best out of you, uh, subtopic, the brand new me. And so... Uh, if it's God's will, we'll finish up this last portion tonight. This has been a, a three-parter. However, what I was wanting to say is that through and in this process, I was also thinking about in the book of Isaiah. We've read that here uh, in this uh, ministry lately. Uh, he says, when you go through the fire, you won't get burned. When you go through the waters, you will not drown. And so, gentlemen, becoming a soldier in Christ, we have to uh, stand on God's word. We have to lean, depend on him. We will go through some things. We will experience some trials and tribulations. But I'm here to tell you that God will deliver us out of them all. So I want to go into this third portion. Uh, we left off or going into the beginning of Proverbs 29 and 25 and reading from the King James Version. It says, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but who so putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So uh, men of war, we, this scripture is telling us that we have to put our trust in the Lord no matter what we uh, are about to encounter, we will be safe. No matter what we face, we will be safe. You know, this particular scripture reminds me of the three Hebrew boys. They were uh, actually thrown into the furnace. And they said that the story tells us that the furnace was so hot that when the guards opened it, they were consumed by the heat and the fire. But these three boys, young men, because they put their trust in the Lord. They were kept safe. They were in the fire. Now, I just told you that I read a version uh, from Isaiah that says, when you walk through the fire, you won't get burned. And so these three boy, Hebrew boys were in the furnace. They were walking around so much so that when they looked in to the fire through the door, the window, what have you, they saw four figures. It was three humans and another figure that they saw walking around in the fire with the three Hebrew boys. When they came out, it says they didn't even smell like smoke. They put their trust in the Lord and he kept them safe. Proverbs 29 and 25 in the Message Bible, those of you who hang out with me know I do kind of like the Message Bible. It says the fear of human opinion disables trusting in God protects you from that. I'm going to say that again. The fear of human opinion will disable. What will it disable you from doing then? It will disable you from trusting in in the word of God. It will disable you from relying, depending on him to bring you through. It will put you in a place that you will see things from a humanistic perspective through the world's eyes, but not through God's eyes. So I want to kind of stop right there for a moment. I want to deviate over to uh, a scripture that 
uh, we are here, Feed My Sheep Ministries, that we dove into on last night in discipleship class. And it's 2 Kings verse 5, and I'm reading through the New Living Translation, but I will also bring up the Message Bible because there's a few pieces I want to touch on to see what it sounds like. But it's talking about naming the leper. And how he is called, the subtopic I'm looking at is the healing of Naaman. But I want to talk about a few things that we talked about last night in discipleship class, man. And we're talking about someone who was experiencing a disease. Um, as we know in Bible uh, stories that it was an incurable or supposedly uh, incurable disease and um, it was it affected the skin and no one wanted to be around you. You were considered unclean and those type of things. You know, you were kind of like an outcast, so to speak. However, in this story, we found out last night that Naaman uh, by his king was sent to go visit uh, a, a, another king that would pronounce a healing upon him. And let me pull that particular scripture up. Uh, when Naaman got to the king that he was sent to, uh, which was the king of Israel at that time, beginning at verse seven, it says, when the king of Israel read the letter, because Naaman was, you know, brought a letter with him, he also brought uh, 700 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold. These were the things to to offer uh, for payment. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, am I God that I can give life and take it away? Why is this man asking me to heal someone with leprosy? Talking about why the king sent Naaman to him. I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this message to him. Why are you so upset? He says, send Naaman to me and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So the story goes on and Naaman ends up uh, in front of Elijah's uh, home, his door, uh, the, the gates. Uh, the, his house, I'm sorry. Uh, it says, so Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elijah's house. But Elijah sent a messenger out to him with his mess, with this message. So now keep in mind, this man is standing in front of a door waiting to see the prophet, which never comes to the door. A messenger comes. Okay. So go, the message, message said, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan river then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. Now, Naaman's mind, okay, what I'm trying to refer this back to is how we have to get away from the way we see things. Uh, one, talking about fear, going back to Proverbs, the fear of human, uh, human opinion disables. It was Naaman's human opinion that at that point was getting in the way of him being healed because of the way that he saw things. Okay, so let me go back here. It says, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Now, here's what Naaman did. Naaman did. He got angry and he stalked away. You know, he walked off in a rage. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Now, again, he's looking at it from his human opinion, what he sees, what he thinks, how he feels. So this scripture in Proverbs is coinciding with what I, the, the, the story that I'm reading to you, men, in the fact that we cannot allow our human opinion to get in the way because it will get it will disable us from trusting in God, 
trusting in his word, trusting in the one that will protect you, the one that will carry you, the one that will lead and guide and direct you. I have a bullet point here. It says fear will cripple. Trust in God enables. Okay. So in this particular situation, it was his anger that crippled him. Okay. So now I'm going to keep reading for you just for a minute. Again, he said, I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and then call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the Far, excuse me, gentlemen, Far, 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 better than any of the rivers of Israel? Because the river that he was telling him to go to was not a clean river, so to speak. Why should not wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in rage. All of this was about how he saw things. Again, that message Bible, Proverbs 29, 25. It says the fear of human opinion. And I want us to hone in on that human opinion disables. See, we are spiritual. We're not worldly. Okay. If you consider yourself a follower of Christ, a disciple of of Christ and you follow his discipline and discipleship of following him, you are not of this world. I mean, you're in this world, but you're not of this world, gentlemen. So this is where we got to get that connect of following Christ and not, and be disconnected from following the world. Again, in this particular story that, you know, I just wanted to bring to your attention. It was at that time. It was, uh, Naaman's, human opinion that was disabling him from being healed because, you know, the way he saw things. So as it goes on, it says, but his officers tried to reason with him and said, sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? Pastor Washington brought it to our attention last night that because it was more difficult, would you give it more, uh, uh, you know, uh, validity because it was something difficult that you had to do. And so it goes on and says, so you should certainly obey him when he says simply go and wash and be cured. The simplest thing that can be right before us, the simplest thing that one, you know, I got to say, I remember, you know, growing up and uh, you would hear people say things like, well, you know, a child can uh, speak a word, can give you a word of wisdom. Uh, well, I want to be the first to tell you, gentlemen, that that, that is true. Uh, but how much validity are you paying to what that child says? The simplest word that can be given to you that can be the answer. That one word can be the answer for your situation can be the word that you've been looking for to answer that prayer that you've been offering up and taking before God and laying on the altar week after week, Sunday after Sunday. For You know, God does not think the way that we think. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. So we have to be, you know, I've been praying for some things here lately and, and I told Pastor Washington, I said, not only am I praying for these things to come to fruition, but more importantly, I'm also asking God that I be positioned to hear him when he gives me the answer, because I don't want to be praying and he give me the answer and I'm still praying and it's like God sitting up there looking at me like, uh, hello, I, I, you know, I've given you the answer that you've been asking for. You know, it's kind of like the story that we've heard. Man, I'm sure most of us heard that story where, you know, a town that was experiencing a flood and the lady that was on the rooftop and, uh, you know, the flood waters kept raising. And uh, I'm sure I'm paraphrasing it might not be telling it right. But, you know, first the before the floods really came, the, the car, the officers came by in the car and uh, the, you know, the lady said, no, she says, I'm all right. Uh, you know, I, I'll be OK. I'm, I'm waiting on, you know, uh, I guess her form of what she thought being rescued was. And uh, the floods began to rise and they came by on the boat. And she was like, no, I'm all right. I'm waiting on the Lord. That's what it was. The first officers came by in the car and she's like, I'm waiting on the Lord. The floods began to rise more. She came by. They came by in the boat. She said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. 
Well, now finally, this lady sitting on the top of her house on the rooftop. The floods done got that high. Now they come through by a helicopter. And she said, well, no, nah, I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, uh, this particular woman in this story ended up in heaven. And uh, God said, yeah, you was waiting on me, but I came by three times. So, gentlemen, we have to understand and we have to... To, to, again, not think like the world thing. There are things that will come to us in a worldly content, okay? Because God is not just, you know, dropping money out the sky, or, you know, doing these things. He's operating through men in this earth realm, men and women in this earth realm. So we got to be open to hear him, amen? Again, fear will cripple, trusting God enables. This is giving God the best that we have to give him, for the brand new me. So long story short. End of the story of Naaman. He finally went down. Did what uh, the, the prophet told him to do. And he was healed. It says. Uh, so Naaman went down to the Jordan River. He dipped himself seven times. As the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy. As the skin of a young child. And he was healed. So, gentlemen, we have got to learn to do things God's way, not our way, not the world's way. Moving on to Proverbs 30 and 5. King James Version says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. The Message Bible says, the believer replied, every promise of God proves true. He protects everyone who runs to him for help. So don't second guess him. Guess what? He just might take you up to take up, take you to the task and show up your lies. So what they're saying, gentlemen, is we can't say we trust in God or, and, and, and you can't worry and fear and believe and trust at the same time. So we can't second guess God because his word is true says he protects everyone who runs to him. It's kind of like, put it from this perspective, when you were little and you ran to your father for help for something or, you know, you fell or your father saw you come, mother and father saw you come running because you scraped your knee. Did they close the door on you when they saw you come running? Uh, you know, I'm sure maybe some of them, you know, sometimes my parents might have wanted to, but they didn't. So... God, if we're running to him, he's not going to turn his back on us. He has his open arms waiting for us, gentlemen. Uh, last couple of points I have down here. I have the word you. Y-O-U. What, does I, what do I have to do? What do you have to do? We have to have confidence. We ought to be confident. We got to be confident in the word of God. At that point, when Naaman was walking away in rage, he didn't have any confidence. He was not confident in what he was told. Why? Because he was thinking about it from the worldly perspective. What he thought his healing should have looked like. Gentlemen, God, I let you in on a secret. God don't need you to help him. He don't need you to visualize what your healing should look like or you give him ideas on how he's supposed to do what he's supposed to do. Uh, he, don't need a, he, don't, he don't need us to help him with that. Uh, we have to be bold. We have to be secure. We have to trust. Gentlemen, uh, I believe if not the last time we were together, but the time before that, uh, I told you I learned that trust, the word trust is an action word. I can't put my trust in, I can't put you, you I can't make put your trust in, in Jesus and you can't put my trust in him. I've got to do it. You can't do it for me. I can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself, which means there's something you have to do. It's an action word. And you have to have confidence again in the word of God. Amen. Second word was God. Because God to cause to trust and to make secure. These are things that, you know, God has already put in place for us. He's already made 
it available for us to trust in him. He's already made our blessings secure in him. And so we've got to go forward in believing in what he says to do what he tells us to do. We have to be obedient and we have to trust in the Lord. Amen. See, if Naaman, if he had not been thinking about it from his perspective, he would have been able to say, okay, this is what the prophet told me to do. I'm going to go do it. See, gentlemen, we have to be stupid enough to believe and do what God tells us to do. Now, that what God tells us to do is in many forms, a lot of times is going to come through. See, God is not always going to speak to you uh, one on one. He's going to send somebody by to speak a word to you. You got to be open. I got to be open to hear that person. No matter who that person is, that person may be your grandmama. It might be your auntie. It might be your sister. It could be your child. So again, we cannot look at it from the perspective of the way the world looks. Amen. Gentlemen, I got to wrap up now. I'm running out of time. As usual, we always have a good time when we get together and we get to talking and, you know, forget about the time. So before I get out of here, I want to give you a piece of information. Gentlemen, I want you to chime in and uh, meet us on Tuesday and Friday mornings at six o'clock, 30 minutes uh, prayer. Uh, you can offer up your prayer requests or you can just listen and pray along with us and get your day started the way it should get started with the Lord. That number is six zero five. Four seven five four one two zero. The access number is three one three three one three six. And just like a conference call, and you can chime in and you can join us in prayer on Tuesdays and Friday mornings at uh, six o'clock for thirty minutes. You can also reach us at www.fmsmgospelnetwork.org forward slash contact us again that's www.fmsmgospelnetwork.org forward slash contact us gentlemen i love y'all appreciate y'all i enjoy hanging out with y'all as always remember every other thursday right here same place same time eight o'clock holler at your buddies holler at your boys tell them where to meet you at on thursdays Tell them you where you won't be, but tell them where you will be. And uh, we'll hang out and we'll go into the word of God. And uh, we are becoming uh, soldiers in Christ. Once again, on behalf of Feed My Sheep Ministries, this is the Men of War Basic Training, Becoming a Soldier in Christ. Holla at you boys. I'll talk with you in two more weeks. All right. Amen.